The purpose of this report is to update the committee on progress with the development of the outline business case for collaboration in the delivery of corporate services, which, as you are aware, is being undertaken by Deloitte on our behalf, and to update the committee on progress with the development of the outline business cases for collaboration in the delivery of operational planning joint capabilities and procedures, training delivery and community risk management. The background appertaining to the corporate service review and to the appointment of Deloitte to carry this out on our behalf is well understood by the committee. However, for completeness, the background details set out within paragraphs 3 to 19 on pages 9 through to 11. We're now five weeks into the review is approaching the halfway mark. Significant progress is being made and I'll invite John, Helen and John to update further when I finish speaking to and summarising the content of the coming report if members have any questions. An update on progress against the other work streams that fall outside of the Corporate Services Review is detailed within paragraphs 20 to 45 which is on pages 11 through to 16 inclusive. Points made at uh, paragraph 22, which is on page 12, that the full outline business case for each of the work streams has not been included within the report, but that is available for members of the committee should you require to see it. In that vein, I'll not speak in detail to each of the areas other than to point out that within relation to co-location shared update that's contained within paragraphs 23 to 24 which is on page 12. <coughs> the operational planning update which is contained within paragraphs 25 to 28 which is on pages 12 to 13. The joint capabilities and procedures update which is contained within paragraphs 29 to 36 on pages 13 to 14. Training delivery update, which is contained within paragraphs 37 and 38, which is on page 14. And finally, the community risk management update, which is contained within paragraphs 39 to 45, on pages 14 to 15. Uh, pause at that point, Chair, and uh, ask if members wish to bring in John, John, or Helen, if you require any further detail on any of the areas I've summarised for you, or if indeed you have any questions for myself or the Chief Constable. Thanks, Chair. Thanks, Chair. Uh, before the open to questions, as we ask John, Helen, or John, if they wish to uh, add anything that the Chief has already outlined. Uh, well, thanks, Chair. I think um, we've, we've provided the overview Throughout this whole process, we've tried to make sure that members of the authority and our staff are, are communicated with as fully as possible in the form of weekly briefings and updates. So um, we'd like to think that people are reasonably well sighted, but if there are any specific questions, we'd be happy to take them.
say some more about what how staff are being engaged. In, in Merseyside Police, for example, we've a very well developed system through a change programme of using subject matter experts and the trade unions and so on are part of that. I think it might be helpful if we just get a bit more uh, of what, what is in Yeah, just in terms of the corporate services review commissioner, um, I think probably to explain a the, the communication plan B what we mean by normal in, in terms of the, the paper. Um, in terms of the corporate services review, I think Helen can speak about the, the consultation for um, for the, the other work streams. But in terms of the corporate services, we've got a two communication strategies, one for each agency that mirror um, each other. So we're particularly keen to coordinate our communication, what we say, when we say, say it, and the, the methodology we use. Um, so that, that plan is mirrored across the two agencies. The Unions Police Federation, um, for us, have been consulted and engaged um, throughout the development of the invitation to tender, the appointment of the uh, contractors. They were invited to, certainly the trade unions were invited to the, the initial um, stakeholder event uh, which launched um, the programme of work. Uh, grateful for Dave Watson from Fire and Rescue for providing the, the basis of our weekly cascade briefing which goes out to uh, the core team members, uh, department heads, key stakeholders, uh, including the trades unions and the police federation, uh, which is sent out on a weekly basis. We're developing an internet page, uh, there will be a webinar further on down the, the, the line, and again, the final present round of presentations when, when there is a product to talk about, which there isn't at the minute because we're only five weeks in out of, out of 12, um, when there is a product to talk about, the unions will be will be involved in that, and then beyond that, we will do a, a level of briefing and engage further engagement with staff. When the paper refers to normal um, processes in terms of ourselves, we're talking about those, those agreed and tried and tested processes that we use to develop an outline business case into the full business case, which is at, at the point where we engage the SMEs and we have the formal engagement and consultation with unions and stakeholders. So. So that's our process, and that, that normal process will begin beyond week 12 of this once we have an outline business case to then present to this committee and others uh, and to take and develop onwards uh, uh, at the direction of the executives from both agencies. Good, thank you. Uh, and similarly for the other work streams, we're now at that outline business case. So I think when Chief Officer group last week, we've had agreements that we would undertake model consultation. So the staff have been involved already in terms of development to make sure that we're presenting the options to them before it comes back to the full business case so that everybody can provide any feedback on the outline business case so that the committee are, are aware about any of that feedback and any sort of views uh, before we move forward to full business case. Just for the benefit of members of the fire authority on the committee, that very much we've been mirroring uh, that activity with uh, fire, rescue, fire and rescue staff all the business cases are being uh, developed through a series of workshops, all of which uh, fully involve the, the stakeholders within the various functions. So that in itself is a nature of, uh, gives an element of consultation. In addition to that, principal officer briefings have fully covered all aspects of collaboration and continue to do so on a regular basis. Just one of the <coughs> Fire service don't currently have a full time use and reps, and if they're not deaf, the director of people and organisational development is identifying somebody potentially from the region who can also engage in just to make sure that the fire staff are also represented. Thank you. No, nothing to add, thank you. Okay, well.